The mood of people in Westminster and the United Kingdom thinking they're going to get a deal, not get a deal through Parliament is moving very, very quickly. I can tell you 24 hours ago, it was doom and gloom. Nobody thought that Theresa May had made any progress with the European Commission. Then she rushes over to Strasbourg, has a meeting with Jean-Claude Juncker. It looks like the advisers met and managed to get some legal assurances that Britain wouldn't be trapped with the Irish backstop, which is basically this agreement which creates a customs union in the event uh, that we can't move forward uh, with a free trade deal. But um, obviously neither the Northern Irish politicians nor the hard Brexiteers of the Conservative Party want that as well. Uh, so it looked like she'd got those assurances. Now people are less sure as well. Uh, and some of the key politicians here are waiting and are pouring through uh, what she agreed last night to see whether it holds legal water as well. And one of the key Brexiteers is a gentleman called Jacob Rees-Mogg. He's the uh, chairman of the European Research Group, which is a group of hard Brexiteers within the Conservative Party. I just spoke to to Jacob Rees-Mogg uh, about understanding the legalities. Uh, he says he's waiting on his own lawyers from his own group, the ERG, to tell them what they think of it. Let's listen in. But I'm waiting to get legal advice because there's an old line, isn't there, that the person who appoints himself as his own lawyer has an ass for a lawyer, mm -hmm. and I don't wish to put myself in the position of an ass. He doesn't want to put himself in the position of an ass. And what he's talking about here is that the government's own lawyers, a gentleman called Geoffrey Cox, uh, he's the Attorney General here, and he's going to get up in an hour or so's time and tell Parliament what he thinks uh, about whether this has moved the goalpost on whether the UK would have to endure indefinitely a customs union uh, with the EU. Why is this important? Because it's absolutely key for the DUP, who are the unionist politicians who back the Conservatives, and it's absolutely key for a key 100 Tory MPs who voted against Mrs May when she had that ignominious defeat on January the 15th, where she lost the greatest defeat that any government's had in British parliamentary history, 432 votes to 202. I've got to say to you, speaking to Remainer MPs, uh, to one cabinet minister today, and I've spoken to a DUP Brexit spokesman, and they are all unsure uh, whether this reduces or eliminates those risks. If it eliminates, then she'll get her vote through. If it just reduces, I'm afraid to say the Brexit saga will go on and Mrs May will not get her deal today, which could lead then tomorrow to a vote on no deal Brexit and then lead on Thursday to another vote about extending the whole Article 50 process. So Mrs May is tantalisingly close to getting the deal she wants and getting Britain out of the EU on March 29th. The problem is she may well be just, just short of that. And that could spell the end also, by the way, of her premiership here in the United Kingdom.